not life. It's our public domain. It's only me that can see it. Peckham, today is a day of salvation. Today is a day that the Lord has made. And today we're here to sound the alarm of the King of glory. Jesus is coming again with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. 
And the Bible says when the trumpet sound, the dead in Christ will be raised from the grave. Friends, are you going to be among those in Christ or those in the church or those in the mosque or those in the Vatican or those in the cathedral? The Bible says those who are in Christ. It is one thing to be in the church. It is another thing to be in Christ. Because there are many unbelievers who go to church but yet do not know God. They sing their hymns and yet do not know Him. But friends, today we're here to remind you it is not good enough to know Him and to sing their hymns. It is good to have His Word abiding in you and Him abiding in you, His Word and His person. The Bible says this is life eternal that they might know the one true God and His Son whom He has sent. Today, my friend, as I come to you today, I'm here to let you know that we all need Jesus. We don't need a religion, but we need a, rel a relationship with Christ. You see, friends, today we're preaching this good news. It's not to bring you to a religion, but it's to bring you to a relationship with Jesus. The question you might ask is, how do I get a relationship with God? Friends, I will tell you how Jesus told everyone tell you how Peter spoke to the men on the day of Pentecost and he says repent repent and be baptized that you might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost Jesus said except we repent we'll likewise perish except we turn away from our sins and pursue Jesus we will likewise perish you see a brother or a sister or a man woman or child can go to church and not walk in repentance and not produce the meat worth of repentance. John the Baptist was by the river Jordan, calling all men to repent, telling them they must produce the meat of repentance, or the fruit of repentance, or else they will likewise perish. Today, people of Peckham, it is the day of salvation. It's a day of repentance. God is opening up the heavens to engage with you and to communicate with you and to pull you out of the mess of these last days. And today in the name of Jesus, like I sounded the alarm, I was there to let you know that the dead in Christ will be raised when the trumpet blows. Those who are alive in Christ will be snatched up when the trumpet blows. At the jingle bells of Santa Claus, the dead do not rise from the grave. At the ho, ho, ho of Santa Claus, those who are alive in Jesus do not encounter the one true God and his son Jesus who was crucified and rose from the grave. But today, we're here to sound the alarm of the coming of the Lord. We're here to let you know that Jesus is coming again. He will not come like a baby in a manger. Nor is he going to come to die for the sins of humanity. But the Bible says he's coming again. As a king and a judge, he's coming again to deal with the issues of life, which is the issues of sin. Friends, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ. See, God's gift to humanity, it is not a Christmas gift. God's gift to humanity is eternal life. That is why good men cannot go to heaven but get a visitation from Santa Claus. You see, Santa looks for good men and good women and good children. But God is looking for men who will repent from their sins and follow Jesus. Friends, a gift, a Santa Claus gift or a Christmas gift doesn't give eternal life. Humanity have celebrated Christmas and it has not changed the hearts of men. It has not changed society. It has not brought transformation in our lives. But there is a gift of God. The gift of eternal life. It has changed the lives of men. Changed the hearts of men. Changed the acts of men. The gift of eternal life that comes through Jesus doesn't give man a religion. But it gives man eternal life. The Bible says the thief cometh to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and life in abundance. People of Peckham, there is one thing to have eternal life. It is another thing to have a terminal religion. Your religion doesn't go beyond eternity. Because in eternity, there are no religious men. There is nothing like a Muslim, a Hindu, a Baptist, a Buddhist, a Catholic, 
in heaven you are either a son of god in eternity you are either a son of god or you are a son of the devil you're a brood of viper you're a scorpion friends the men that dwell with god are those that have eternal life today god gave us a son that we might be sons of the living god the bible say as many as receive jesus not a religion he gave them power to become sons of god my desire here today is that you will not receive a religion but you receive the gift of eternal life that comes through repentance and faith in the one true god and his son jesus whom he has sent my desire is not for you to become muslim a catholic a baptist a buddhist a hindu a mormon or a jehovah witness my desire is that you will receive jesus christ as your lord and personal savior we need him to be lord in our lives so he can protect us and deliver us we need him to be savior in our lives that our sins will be remitted we need him to be savior in our lives so that our sins can be blotted out our sins can be forgiven we do not need baha buddha or krishna or muhammad because none of them can provide salvation for sins none of them can provide remission for sins none of them can pro provide forgiveness of sins we pursue jesus because the bible declares in the gospel of john the chapter 123 that he's the lump of god that taketh away the sins of the world friends the issues of this life this generation this nation is the problem of sin the bible say the wages of sin is death the bible say by one man sin came into the world sin came into the world and true sin came death true sin came sickness true sin came pain and suffering friends that is why today we're here to preach the good news we're here to provide a solution for the issues of sin we're here to provide an answer to the problem of this life people of peckham for all have sinned and they've fallen short of the glory of god for all have sinned and they've come short of the image of god and the likeness of god god bless you my friend it's okay what do i need this fine you need that what's your name this is your home what is your name my name is jesus what is that the bible says god is not mocked he sucks me listen Listen, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. You can give this leaf of peace to God. You'll find peace through repentance. Brothers and sisters in Peckham, today is a day of salvation. We're here delivering the news that will give you redemption. We're here to give you the news that will give you salvation. We're here that will give you the news that will give you eternal life. We're here that will give you the news that will make you a friend of God. We're here to give you the news that will deliver you from your depression and anxiety. We're here to deliver, deliver the news that will give you peace eternally and deliver you from your fears. Today, except we repent, the Bible declares that we'll all likewise perish. And today, my agenda is not to cause alarm and distress. My agenda is that I would let you know the truth. For the word says that you will know the truth. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, the 36, it says that you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth sets free. The truth brings deliverance. The truth empowers. The truth enlightens. The truth brings one closer to God. The truth enables one to have a relationship with God. The truth enables one to have his eyes open to see God. The truth will give you access to the kingdom. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It will set you free from death. The truth, the truth will set you free from sickness, disease and infirmity. The truth sets one free from the judgment of God and the wrath of God. The truth will set you free from going to hell. And friends, the question each and one of us, all of us should ask is this. Who is truth? 
because many of us know what truth is but our truth is tied to the reality of science our truth is not tied to the person of god and truth friends is not what we read in sociology or philosophy or science but truth is a person and jesus said in the gospel of john 14 6 it says i am the truth the way and the life friends truth is not what you read in the library truth is a person my question to everyone in peckham do you know the truth we are people who claim they're rastafarians and rastafarian from what i read was that they were there to expose the lie but you see you cannot expose a lie without not knowing the truth it is impossible to expose lies without having the truth encountering the truth and friends to know the truth is that we will know jesus to know the truth is that we will know the way to know the truth is that we will know the life it is life that ushers one into truth and how does one come into truth by having a relationship with the one true god and his son jesus christ whom he has sent but today our jesus christ is painted with different colors the jesus that we preach is a white man jesus the jesus that we preach is a black man jesus the jesus that we preach is a is a christmas kind of jesus the jesus that we preach is an easter kind of jesus but we forget that this god this jesus whom we preach is the god that was in the beginning the jesus that we preach is the word of god the jesus that we preach is the word that was with god the jesus that we're preaching today is god the bible says that jesus that we preach is the one that created the heavens and the earth and everything that we see in the seas in the clouds this jesus it is not your colored jesus that is black that is white but it's the jesus that gives life the bible says in him this jesus in him was life and the life was the light of man though he came being like a black man the main essence of his coming was to fulfill the prophecy that was given to abraham that out of the loins of abraham shall come a seed that will bruise the head of the serpent out of the loins of abraham will come a blessing that will be a blessing to the families of the earth this blessing will not just bless white people this blessing will not just bless black people chinese people it will bless the men in all the nations the bible says god calls abraham it says in you shall the families of the earth be blessed it says as much as you can count the dust of the sun that will be the number of your descendants if you can count the stars of the heaven it said that will be the number of your descendants a spiritual descendant and an earthly descendant because all of them will be engrafted in the truth that i preach all of them will be engrafted in jesus that is why for us to come and become partakers of the blessing of abraham and walk in the life of abraham or become friends of god like abraham we must be born again friends in peckham jesus speaks to a man who was born in a jewish religion he speaks to nicodemus who was well read in the doctrine of the pharisees he speaks to a man that not only was he well read educated taught and born in the line of abraham this man lacked eternal life even if this man nicodemus was a black man he lacked something and jesus comes to him and say friend except a man be born again you will likewise perish brothers and sisters who believe in a black hebrew israelite doctrine except you be born again you cannot enter the kingdom men women and peckham and friends men do not enter the kingdom by being a black man nor do they enter into the kingdom by being a white man but men enter the kingdom by being born being born again friends in peckham you have to be born again the bible says except a man be born again it didn't say except a man be black 
or except a man be white, he will not enter the kingdom. And that goes for all religion. It didn't say except a man be a Catholic. Because you see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. There were Sudacees, there were scribes. These were all religious sect. So, except a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom. It didn't say except a man be black, white, green, yellow, a Muslim, a Catholic, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a new age practitioner. It didn't say if one is a Mormon or one is a Jehovah Witness, he will enter the kingdom. No. It said except a man be born again. Except a man be born of the water and the spirit. And today, my friend, there is an experience that one experiences when he's born of the spirit. Friends, you must be born again. To be born again is to turn away from your sins and believe in Jesus. That is why for God so loved the world, people of Peckham, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have an everlasting life. Friends, today you must be born again. Friends in Peckham, today you must repent from your sins. Because except we repent, the Bible says, we'll likewise perish. We'll likewise perish being black man. We'll likewise perish being white man. We'll likewise perish having a lot of money. We'll likewise perish being beautiful women and handsome men. We'll likewise perish being ignorant and thinking by money we can gain access. Friends, today it is a day of salvation. And God is calling all men everywhere in Peckham, repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today we're here to dispense the truth. And like I was saying before, Rastafari ought to know the truth. They ought to have a relationship with the truth. Because truth is not what you read, but it's who you know. And that person is Jesus. The Yeshua HaMashiach. The lump of God that taken away the sins of the world. The only begotten son of the father. The one that was sent to humanity that whosoever believes in him will not perish. Today you must believe in Jesus. You must be acquainted with him. You must not just know him by the skin color, but know him in the spirit. For God is a spirit. Jesus is a spirit. Jesus is not a white spirit, a black spirit, a yellow spirit, a green spirit, but it's a spirit. And today friends, each and every one of us, whether we're black, blue, green, and yellow, we have a spirit. We're spirit living in our earthly body. That is why we're human beings. Human beings, beings that dwell in humus atar or humus body. Man dwelling in dust. The Bible says how God formed man out of the dust and he breathed in the nostril. The real you is the breath of God in you. And that real you one day will stand out before God. It doesn't really matter if you have a sex change. You see, your gender reality, what you call homosexuality, your homosexual identity, or what you call an LGBT identity, will not hold weight in the realm of the spirit and in eternity when God comes to take those who are in Christ. And that is why, what will it profit a man if he gains a sex change? What will it profit a man if he is able to change his gender identity? What will it profit you at the expense of your soul? Your soul is the reason why God came to save humanity. You see, souls are perishing daily. Souls are going to hell in a handbasket. That is why the Bible says the blood of the Lamb was shed for the atonement of souls, for the remission of sins. Your soul is so precious that God sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him they will not perish the bible say whilst men were living in sin and living in ungodly lifestyles while men were becoming gays and homosexuals god still gave his son while men were debating whether god exists or not or being atheists and darwinists and evolutionists god still gave us his son Whilst men were gangsters, drug addicts, and drunkards, and, 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 and rapists, and pedophiles, God still gave us His Son. Don't forget, God knows everything from the beginning to the end. He knows the decision you will make, in spite of the fact that you will preach this gospel, 
in spite of the fact that he would demonstrate his love through the death burial resurrection of his son he knows the decisions of men for god did not create all men like robots he gave us free will to make a decision to serve god to believe in him he gave us free will so that we can make decisions on our own friends in peckham today it is a day of salvation and god is calling you unto himself the bible says that jesus said if anyone is perplexed it says come unto me O ye who are heavy laden and i will give you rest friends there is rest in jesus there is no rest in religion there is no rest in buddha there is no rest in krishna nor is there rest in baha muhammad or any other religion but there's only rest in the one true god and his son jesus christ whom he has sent we will find true rest pure rest eternal rest in jesus the messiah today in the name of jesus we're here to dispense the message of the gospel of jesus christ that gives men rest and the forgiveness of sins and the remission of sins today if you will call upon the name of the lord you 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 can be saved the bible say whosoever will call upon the name of the lord jesus why will men call upon the name of the lord they will call upon the name of the lord because they are broken they have brokenness over sins they know that their sins are sending them to hell they know that their sins will release the wrath of god upon their life they know that their sins is condemning their very life and today brothers and sisters i'm here to call you into this eternal life the bible says jesus came that you might have life and life internally jesus did not come to give you a religion so you can be a muslim jesus did not come to give you a religion so you can be a hindu jesus did not come into this world to give you a religion so you could be a buddhist or a new age or, or a mammon but he came to give men life he came to call sinners to repentance jesus came not to abolish the law but to fulfill the law he came not to give you a religion in all the mandates and the purposes and the reason for which jesus came was not to give men a religion but to give men eternal life and the reason for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son was that you will believe to receive eternal life. See, this life is not tied to a religious activity or a religious custom. The life that Jesus gave is not a life of religion. That is why many are Catholics or practice Catholicism and all they have is a Catholic life. But those who have eternal life have the life of God in them and on the day of the appearance of jesus when he comes with clouds of heaven with glory and with great power the bible say all eyes will see the king of glory all eyes will see him on that day it will not be for a selected few but all eyes those who pierced him will see him the atheists who do not believe in god on that day when the king of glory the yeshua hamashiach jesus christ appears with clouds of heaven with glory and with great power they will see him and because they rejected the day of the visitation when the gospel was preached when the truth was being delivered the bible say the nations of the earth the families of the earth will mourn they will cry they will cry because they missed the day of visitation they will cry because it will be a tear of had i known had i known had i known had i known Friends, my desire is that you will not miss your day of visitation. You will not miss your day of encounter with the Lord. Because the last days are manifesting very quick. And the Bible says in the last days, there will be earthquakes in diverse places. The Bible declares that in the last days, in the last days, in the last days, nation will rise against nation. There will be farming in diverse places, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences in diverse places. We saw an example of a pestilence in the last days. It was the coronavirus, the COVID-19. 
it had us all locked down and this was the kind of prophecy that jesus spoke about and therefore we all must begin to seek jesus because in him was life and the life was the light of men friends in peckham except we repent will likewise perish don't repent to buddha don't repent to krishna don't repent to muhammad but repent to jesus he is the lump of god that taken away the sins of the world we need jesus in our last days we don't need a religion friends i'm not here to preach a religious doctrine for you to receive a religion my desire is that you have a relationship with god many are looking for a religion for protection they're looking for religious protection like their name is andrew takes looking for religious protection you don't find protection in religion you'll find eternal protection in jesus until you have him in your life you can have all the things of this world and you will lose your soul being cast into the lake of fire love dancing with the devil with national teeth burning and rolling in the lake of fire crying for a drop of water and there will be no intervention for you to have a drop of water or your favorite beer you'll find yourself playing musical chairs with demons and except you repent you'll likewise perish so therefore Peckham will come saying repent repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for Jesus called all men these were men that were religious these were men that had a covenant with God but yet had gone astray and they were hiding their iniquity and their sins with their religion religion has a way of hiding the hearts of men in the book of Jeremiah it said the hearts of men are desperately wicked who can know it the hearts of men are wicked evil every one of us here including me had an evil heart until the Lord Jesus came to change our hearts that is why our religion doesn't change hearts religion hasn't changed society there are many Marxists in Peckham but the climate has not changed because you see religion doesn't change the hearts a relationship with Jesus changed the hearts of men and that is why we need fellowship relationship with Jesus not a religious relationship with Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad and Allah but we need a religion with relationship men come into a relationship with God and men see it as a religion I'm just manifesting my relationship with the one true God and his son Jesus Christ by virtue of this religion of this relationship with jesus i go and i tell it on the mountain i go and i tell it on the wayside i go and i tell it in the valley i go and i tell it in the sea i go and i tell it in the cave oh friends in peckham today is that day that the lord has made to call you into a relationship Jesus came that he will become friends with sinners if those sinners will turn away from their sins and repent friends do not reject this friendship offer from Jesus it is that of that offering of friendship that Jesus is given is what will give you remission from sins the offering of friendship from God is what will give you forgiveness of sin you see friends many of you until you begin to drink the coffee of the kingdom you will not find true peace because the coffee of the kingdom is christ offering forgiveness for everyone everywhere the c means christ the o means offering and the f means forgiveness the f again means for the e means for everyone then e everywhere that means it's part you in africa in asia the north pole south pole Christ is offering forgiveness for everyone everywhere and that is the coffee of the kingdom the coffee of the kingdom Christ offering forgiveness for everyone everywhere and today we're offering the coffee of the kingdom the gospel of Jesus the gospel of Jesus Paul said therefore I'm not ashamed of this gospel this gospel I'm not ashamed of that's why I'm here in Peckham with a trumpet in my hands I'm here in Peckham to tell you of Jesus 
nor your white Jesus or your black Jesus, but the Jesus that is the word that was with God, that is God, in whom was in the beginning with God, in whom was nothing made that was made, in whom was life and the life was the light of man, the Lord Jesus, the one who his light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended not. The Jesus that was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy enchanters, diviners, thieves and walkers and watchers of darkness. Jesus that cast out devils, the Jesus that heals the sick, the Jesus that raises the dead, the Jesus that rose from the dead, the Jesus that has in his hands the keys of death and hell, the Jesus that has the key of David. That Jesus is not Buddha. That Jesus is not Krishna. That Jesus is not Mohammed. Because none of them have the key of death and hell in their hands. None of them have the key of David. Nor were they from the loins of David. All these men you talk about were not the promised seed to humanity. That will come and give peace and blessing to humanity. And that is why we preach Jesus the Spirit. The one who was in the beginning in eternity. The one who is alive forevermore and makes intercession for you and I. He makes intercession for black men, for white men, for yellow men, for green men. You see, your Muhammad, your Mary, whom you pray to for the forgiveness of sin is dead and cannot hear prayers. They can't hear your confessions. Nor can they hear your supplications. Nor can they hear your prayers. Nor can they hear your petitions. They are dead and in the grave. But we have one who was buried and rose from the grave. His name is Jesus, the Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who makes intercession for you and I at the right hand of the Father. His name is Jesus and is alive. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, and I live forevermore. Behold, he comes with clouds of heaven. Because he's risen, he can come again. But you see, your Mary and your Mohammed cannot come again. It will take the Messiah to come to let them out. But they will be resurrected unto condemnation if they did not repent. But those who repented from their sins and believe in Jesus will be resurrected unto eternal life. Madam, do not reject this track. This track will change your life and change your heart and heal the wounds in your heart. This track carries an anointing that heals the brokenhearted. This track of the name of Jesus carries an anointing that opens the door of the prison. When men reject the message of Christ, they've rejected the anointing that opens the door of the prisons. They reject the anointing that declares the acceptable year of the Lord. Friends, today, you can have the acceptable year of the Lord manifest in your life. My brother, your witchcraft will not operate against me. There is no enchantment, no divination against me that will prevail. This day you will see the wrath of God. Numbers 23, 23. There is no enchantment or divination against Andre that will prevail. I'm a child of God who God bless can never be cursed. Your curses won't work. Your libation, your invoking of deities, demonic deities will not operate. Your gods that are buried in the ground cannot come against me. Repent, my friend, in the name of Jesus. Today, it is a day that the Lord has made. Today, my desire is that you will repent from your sins. Today, the Bible says in Isaiah 58 verse 1, it says, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And this is how the voice is lifted up.
Isaiah 58, he said, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell the people their sins and their transgression. Tell the men in Buckingham Palace, including King Charles III, their sins and their transgression. Tell all men, women, and children in Peckham their transgressions. Tell them, tell them of their sins, that the wages of sin is death. Friends, I come to let you know that the wages of your sin is death. But there is a gift of God that gives eternal life and it comes through Jesus Christ the Lord. Not through Buddha, not through Krishna, not through Muhammad, not through Baha, not through Charles Russell or Joseph Smith. But it doesn't come through any religious figure that have founded the religions under heavens known among men. But this gift of eternal life comes through Jesus. Friends, that is the good news that today if anyone is afraid to die, they can receive Jesus and receive a special life, a life eternity, a life everlasting, a life eternal, a peaceful life, a redeeming life that you can't find in religion, but you can find through Jesus. You can find through Jesus. You can find through Christ. Man cannot give you eternal life. Eternal life is not found through religion. And friends in Peckham, I want to let you know your sinful lifestyle is hindering you from receiving the life of God. This life of God is uncreated. The life that each and one of us have is a created life. And it ends when you breathe your last breath. You have a created life that is subject to the God that has uncreated life. This life eternal that we preach is the uncreated life of God. Today, you can receive the uncreated life of God through Jesus Christ. That is why when I look at Muhammad, I realize he doesn't have the uncreated life. When I look at Krishna, Baha, Buddha, they don't have the uncreated life of God because they're dead in the grave. But we preach one that conquered the grave. We preach one that has the keys of hell and death in his hand. We preach one that has the key of David. His name is the Yeshua HaMashiach. We preach one in whom was life and the life was the light of man. Friends in Peckham, you don't need a bulletproof vest, nor do you need a gun or a, a knife on your hip to save your life. You need eternal life to save your creator life that you might dine and wine with Christ in heaven, seated above principalities and power, with might and dominion, to have power with God, to reign with God in eternity, and not lap dance with the devil with national teeth, burning and rolling in a lake of fire. Repent, therefore, my friend, and call on the name of the Lord. That you will be saved this salvation that god gives is not a salvation into religion it is a salvation unto god a salvation unto jesus it comes through repentance and faith unto jesus friends and peckham today we're here to let you know that jesus said i am the way is there anybody here that is lost cannot find their ways or navigate their, their way through these issues of life cannot navigate their way in this dark world in this dark generation and dark nation that is founded by the system of the antichrist is there anybody here that is struggling how am i a liar you are a liar and a thief repent today in the name of jesus we're here to call all men everywhere to repent because except we repent we'll likewise perish except we call on his name alone he said whosoever will call on the name of jesus shall be saved Men do not receive salvation unto eternal life through Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, and Baha. But they receive eternal life through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This life that I'm speaking about is not a created life matter. It is an eternal life matter. And friends in Peckham, today I'm not here to preach a black man's gospel, a white man's gospel, or an LGBT gospel, or a social justice gospel. I'm here to lift up the name of Jesus. It is in his name that all knees shall bow and every time will confess that Jesus Christ, the Yeshua HaMashiach is the Lord. And Buddha is not. And Krishna is not. And Muhammad is not. But Jesus, by which all demons tremble, by which all demons bow down and confess that he is the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God that has power to torment demons before their time. Today, Friends in Peckham, life is short and eternity is long. Many of you have insurances for your cars, insurances for your burials. Some of you have insurance for your health. 
but you do not have eternal life insurance for your soul. And today, by the delivery of the gospel, you can subscribe to this eternal life insurance to preserve your soul from the judgment of God, to preserve your soul from the wrath of God. Friends in Peckham, today we mean business because many are going to hell lap dancing with the devil with national teeth in a hand basket. Many are going to hell playing musical chairs with demons with pain and agony and national teeth. Many are going to hell in regret and pain and agony because they wish and they had heard this message and are turned away from their sins, turned away from their drunkenness, turned away from their pedophilia, turned away from their gangster life, turned away from their drug dealing. Many had wished they had received this message and turned away from their homosexuality and lesbianism. Many had wished because they had, heard, they had hell's gates and about to begin to suffer and they wish that they had turned away because many of them do not find, don't want to find themselves bending and rolling in the lake of fire, lap dancing with the devil with national tea. Friends, today is that day that the Lord has made and I'm here to let you know that God did not send his son into the world to condemn Peckham, condemn me or you, but he sent his son that through him you will have eternal life. Friends, today we're not here to condemn you. We're here to call you into repentance. We're here to call you into discipleship unto Jesus. Friends, today, it is a day of salvation. God did not send us to condemn you, but through the preaching of the message of the gospel, you will have an encounter with Jesus. You will acknowledge that you are a sinner. Admit that you are a sinner. Admit that Jesus Christ is not just a prophet as many other Muslims say. But Jesus is not just a prophet, but a saving prophet, a redeeming prophet, a resurrected prophet. Because prophet Muhammad died and didn't, wasn't able to raise himself from the grave. No, Mo, no Moses, no Elijah, no Elisha. All of them are dead in the grave. But we have one that is a resurrected prophet. We are one that is Lord and God because the keys of death and hell are in his hands. He has power over death. We are one that rose the dead after four days because it is believed that the spirit of a man dwells around the body for three days and after four days he departs. But you see, God allowed this for his glory. The Lazarus will stink and he will be dead for four days. And he came. He looks at Mary and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Maybe you know him as a prophet. You know him as a prophet. But you don't know him as the resurrection and the life. And that is why we preach this gospel. That you will not just know him as a prophet. You will not know him as one that heals the sick alone. You will not just know him as one that fed 5,000 and 3,000 with five loaves of bread. But you will know him as the resurrection and the life. And that is why in the last day when he appears, the sign of his coming will be ushered in by resurrection. The Bible says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And those that hear the trumpet of God, dead or alive, will be translated to meet the Lord in the air. And when this trumpet blows, friends in Peckham, when the trumpet blows, it will sound like this. Will you have the spiritual ear that will awaken you, raise you from the dead? Will you have the, the compatibility that at the sound of the trumpet, you will be translated to meet the Lord in the air and go to be with the Father forever? When the trumpet blows, when it blows like this, will you be among the number? in Peckham when this trumpet blow it will not be a day of national emergency but it will be a day recording the Lord descending with clouds of heaven 
coming to take his own, coming to call his own. And today my desire, people in Peckham, is that you have an encounter with Jesus. That when the trumpet blows, you go to be with the place that the Lord has prepared. In John 14, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place that where I am, you will be also. You will be also. You will be also. See, Jesus is going to prepare a place. And he says, I'm coming back. Coming back, not as a ba may baby in a manger. Coming back. Not as a baby in a manger so you can celebrate Christmas. And put up Christmas lights. Christmas trees. Distribute Christmas gifts. Friends, Jesus is not coming. As one to die for the sins of sinners. To be nailed to the cross. So you can celebrate Easter. But Jesus is coming again. He's coming. He's coming. And today in the name of Jesus. I'm here to let you know Peckham. That your religion won't save you. Your ideology and your knowledge cannot save you. Except a man be born again. You will likewise perish. Repent. Peckham repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today in the name of Jesus, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, the chapter 6, it says, do not be deceived because many of us are deceived. That is why receiving the Bible tracts is a problem. You see, black men will receive the Bible tracts, they won't read it. They're just trying to pacify their guilt. Together with white men, they'll just take it, they won't read it. They'll put it in their pocket and throw it in the bin. They are afraid. Because you see, when you read the word of God, it exposes your sin. It is a good thing that your sins are exposed. It brings you, it helps the word of God addresses that issue of sin in your life. And you must comply. Because it will take repentance and faith unto God to deliver you from the guilt of sin. To deliver you from the wrath of God. To deliver you from the judgment of sin. To give you a seat among the immortal sons of God in the last days. Friends in Peckham, life is short and eternity is long. Don't play, don't play poker with your life. Don't gamble with your life. Life is short, my friend. See, the way men have treated life has led men into madness. Has led men into anxiety. Because they think by their own strength, they can deal with the issues of life. They think by their knowledge, by their affiliation with religion, they can deal with the issues of life. But friends in Peckham, life has a bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life because life has a hunger. And the hunger of this life can only be satisfied by the bread of life, who is the Yeshua HaMashiach. And many of you have problem with the translation of the name of God. And so now you've gone into religious theologies and cannot believe the one true God and the Son whom He has sent. You cannot believe Him that was in the beginning, in whom was life, and the life was the light of man. You cannot believe in whom that has light and that darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. It becomes difficult because you have put the stumbling block of the translation of the name of Jesus, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. It's become a stumbling block for you to having a relationship with him. So many are affiliating with religion and have become Hebrew Israelites. You see, friends, the Bible says as many as receive Jesus, he didn't give them power to become Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites, but he gave them power to become sons of God. As many as received him, he didn't give them power as well to become Muslims or Catholics. The Bible says as many as received Jesus, he gave them power to become a son or a child of the living God. Our power rests in the sonship. The gospel is a message to adopt sinners and convert them into the life of God. To convert sinners to saints. That is why you must be born again to enter into the family of God, to have the DNA of God. So the image and likeness of God that was once when men before they sin can be restored. Friends, life is short and eternity is long. Today you must make a decision, heaven or hell. Today 
you must decide a son of the devil or a son of God. You see, it's not about you being a Muslim, a Catholic, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Baptist, and all these Christian denominations. Are you a child of God? Because God will not be coming for Catholics. He will be coming for his sons. He's coming for his children. He's coming for his people. And his people are not Muslims. His people are not Hindus. His people are not Buddhists. His people are not atheists. His people are not people who practice New Age witchcraft. His people, why are you telling me to shut up? You need salvation, my friend. And we are going to preach this gospel. And you will not shut it down. Hallelujah. Today, it is a day of salvation. When the gospel comes with fire, men tremble and they respond. So is the preaching of the gospel. It's the middle finger. The response towards the preaching of the gospel is the F word, the S word, the B word. But you see, friends, today your B word won't save you. Your B word in an attempt to cause me pain and grief, it will not affect me because you have not offended me by God. And one day you'll make account for every deed you committed and every word that you spoke. The Bible says a man shall be ensnared by the word of his mouth. And so when you tell me to F off, to B off, or to S off, one day you, that word will ensnare you. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And he that is of it shall enjoy the fruit of his S word, his B word. And all the words that come with it. Friends, today it is a day of salvation. Friends, today we're not here to make you friends with Buddha or Krishna or Muhammad. Today you need to be friends with Jesus. Maybe you hate the name Jesus because Jesus is a white man. By the Yeshua HaMashiach that we preach, he's a Jewish man that came to give men salvation. He is a spirit above all. Just came to fulfill the prophecy of Abraham. He came to give life to humanity and blessing through humanity. And the blessing that Jesus gave is not the blessing with money. See, we black people, we like money. We will sell our own for money. We like money. Money can't save you. The thing that saves is Jesus, the Yeshua HaMashiach. Money can't buy you into eternity. You will die and leave your money on the earth. That is why you need, you need salvation. Steve Jobs had all the money and the stock bonds. He wished he could have given all his money and even the Apple Corporation company over to, to be healed by his money could not give him healing. But you know what? There is good news that could have given him eternal life. And that good news is in Jesus. That good news is in Jesus, the Yeshua HaMashiach. Friends in Peckham, life is short, eternity is long. Don't gamble with your life. Being a gangster, being a prostitute, being a liar, being a Muslim, being a Catholic, because all these things Jesus rebukes. He put woes on religious men. And there is a woe against the Vatican. There is a woe against Muslim. There is a woe against Hindus. There is a woe against Christians. Because in the last day, Jesus said, Not all that say, Lord, Lord, will come unto me. On that day, Christians will say, Lord, Lord. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. So if Jesus is saying Christians, he never knew them, then the Muslim who did not believe in Jesus as the Savior and the Messiah, and the Hindu who did not believe in Jesus. If to the Christians we have, is a very thin line, we can miss and lose our salvation, then those who do not have Jesus, those who do not go to the church, those who do not believe in Jesus as Messiah, what about you? You have no hope. That is why our hope is not in a building. It is not in customs and religious religion and traditions and religious prayer our hope is in faith in the one true god and his son whom he has sent pick up stop playing religion and come to jesus for today is a day of salvation and except we repent will likewise perish friends as i come to the end of my message the end of my message is the a b c d to receive eternal life my desire and the mandate for which I am sent is that you receive eternal life. 
eternal life to the Yeshua HaMashiach, not to Buddha, Krishna, or Muhammad. Brother, pick that truck. God bless you. Hallelujah. Don't destroy that truck, brother. Don't crumble it. Your life is tied to it. Your transformation, your peace, your redemption is attached to it. You go and read the truck. Friends, today, here you go, bro. Hallelujah. Friends in Peckham, as I come to the end of my message, I'm here to let you know that Jesus is coming. Not as a baby in a manger so you celebrate Christmas. Not as a savior to deliver you from your sins so you can celebrate Easter. I know you're smiling on the bike, but it's true. He's coming as a king and a judge. He's coming to judge humanity for their sinful nature. Judge them for their own repented lifestyle. Judge them for their abomination. You see, there are 16 God do it hates, and seven is an abomination. Not only is homosexuality an abomination by a lying tongue, one that sows discord is an abomination to the Lord. One that kills or, or destroys innocent lives, like killing of babies, is an abomination. Read the book of Hebrews or Proverbs. It will show you seven things that are an abomination, including witchcraft, sorcery, homosexuality, and bestiality. Because there are men and women that sleep with dogs. And that is an abomination. It's an abomination. It's an abomination. Not only homosexuality, the killing of babies is an abomination. The shedding of innocent blood is an abomination. And for those who are in the hood, who are in the estates, killing one man, a brother, the black on black crime is an abomination. And except we repent, will likewise perish. And today, in the name of Jesus, we're here to call all men to repent. And brother, don't, don't wave away your hands. Your life is tied to this message. There is a spirit attached to the text in the track. And you must contact that spirit. For God is a spirit. And he seeks such to worship him. The true worshippers are those who have truth and spirit. They come to God in spirit. They not come to God as black men and white men. They come to God in the spirit. Because many of those are in the church have rejected the things of the spirit. Man, what are you talking about, brother? You need the truth, bro. You need the truth. What is the truth? Please tell me. No, I can't hear you. I'm, come, let me come closer. Come, let's have an encounter. Come, let's have an Come, let's have a conversation. You need to repent. You're, you see, you claim you're a Rastafarian. Yeah, you're a lion, but you eat grass. Lions don't eat grass. The madness about Rastafarian is they say they're the lion of the trap of Judah, but lions don't eat grass. They eat meat. They forget that even God, when he came to visit Abraham, he ate meat. Abraham cooked a lamb. He ate the lamb and blessed Abraham with a child. You see, your folly of your Rastafarianism, you don't know the God who is a spirit that can manifest in the flesh to save humanity from their problems and the issues of sin. You see, to be a Rastafarian, you must have an encounter with Jesus. You must know Jesus, the truth, to overturn the lie. It's not about reading books. A King James Version Bible without an encounter with Jesus is useless. Because Paul said, the letter kill it. The letter in the King James Version kill it. But the spirit of the text in the King James Version gives life. Until you encounter the spirit of the text, you have not arrived. You have not entered. You have not crossed. You have not climbed. You have not ascended. You are useless. You will die like a mere man. And except you become born again. So that you will be born again from your Rastafarianism and your Hinduism and your Islamism and your Mormonism and your Jehovah Witnessism and your evolutionism and your Darwinism and your atheism, you will perish not seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom. Repent, but come, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Except we repent, we'll likewise perish. And today, my message is that you receive life, you receive the uncreated life of God. Because your religion is a thief. 
made by the devil, founded by men of the devil, children of the devil, broods of serpent that created religion that will divert men from the path of righteousness and the path of life and the truth and the way and the life from the path to Christ. Your religion, your Shintoism, your, your whatever isms have diverted men. And that is why Jesus was against religious men who misguided men. They were the blind leading the blind. Your religion has blinded many from having an encounter with the one true God whose name is Yeshua HaMashiach, the God that became flesh. The Bible says in him was life. In Muhammad was no life by a creator life, but in Jesus was eternal life. And the life was the light of men. Men will find true life not by joining the secret society or the Illuminati or knowing signs and knowing the knowledge hidden from the men of the earth. But men will find true light when they receive the uncreated life of God, which is Jesus. See, the created, uncreated life was packaged in a man. That is why the Bible said there is no mediator between God and man except the man Jesus. The Bible said the Son of God became a son of man, that the sons of men will become sons of God. The Bible says as many as received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. God doesn't give men power to be Rastafarians, power to be Muslim, power to be Hindus, power to be, to be Buddhists, or power to become sorcerers and witches, power to become African traditionalists who worship the Nananum. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent from your voodoo dolls. Repent. Repent from your witchcraft. Repent from your evil altars. Repent. Repent. Repent from your mediums, your divination. Repent from your enchanters, enchantments. Repent from your soothsaying. Repent, you false prophets that are entering the church. Repent. Repent. Repent, you liar. Repent. All those who are in black Hebrew Israelism preaching a wrong doctrine. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptized that you will receive moments of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Repent and be ye converted. It's true conversion will receive moments of refreshing from the Lord. It's true repentance that will receive illumination to enter the kingdom, to see the kingdom, to become born again. For Jesus said, except a man repent, you will likewise perish. Hallelujah. Repent. Stop smoking. Come. Jesus wants to dwell in you. He, wants, he doesn't want you to be a dent of teeth. But the house of God in whom the spirit of God dwells. God bless you, bro. You're good. Hallelujah. Friends, today is a day of salvation. Today is a day that the Lord has made. He's made it. It is ordained. He's, um, he's made it ordained. It. My friend, receive that track, friend. You see, the white man who tried, who claimed they brought Christianity to Africa, but it's not true, because Philip, the disciple of Jesus, preached to an African, and he brought Christianity to Africa. It was not brought to the Africans in the 1400. It was actually brought to Africa in the first century before the King James Version was available, the Torah was in Africa, preached by Ethiopians. Ethiopians built the same temple of David in Ethiopia. And if there's any temple, there's no temple without the word of God, the word of Christ. Africans were reading the book of Isaiah 53, looking for salvation in Christ. The white man didn't bring uh, the gospel to Africa. And that is why we need to know this truth. There's no need to hate the white man either. Because he continued the preaching of the gospel. Maybe with an intent to exploit us. But the Bible says it was for the furtherance of the gospel. That you and I will come to receive life. There is power in Jesus. Not in money. Not in power. Not in black power. Not in white power. But power in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, today is a day of salvation. Friends in Peckham, except we repent, we will likewise perish. Many of us do not need a religion. You see, 
event on the emergence of pestilence, earthquakes, everybody will be calling on the name of God. They will not be looking to receive a religion, but they are looking for a name that can deliver them from their sickness. When a man is about to have an accident, I hear them say, Oh, Jesus! Because they don't need a religion, they need the name of God in their life. But I see religion has hindered us from contacting God by calling on his name. The Bible says, Whosoever will call on the name of Jesus shall be saved. And today, in the name of Jesus, the Yeshua HaMashiach, the one that has the keys of heaven, you can be saved, can receive remission of sins, can receive the forgiveness of sins, can receive the pardon of your sins, you can receive a seat with God in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. You can receive sanctification, can see purification, my dear sister. Islam won't save you, dear sister. You need the covering of salvation that comes through Jesus. Allah can't save you. He doesn't give salvation. He gives you a religion. Jesus gives you salvation, eternal life. Buddha, Krishna, and Muhammad will give you a religion. Today, Jesus has been sent to humanity that whosoever believes in him will not perish in religion. What are you saying? That's right. He hasn't forsaken you. Do you know Jesus? You know, dear sister, that's right. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. You do. Do you believe that same, that same encounter that many received in the days of Jesus, you could receive it now? Do you believe that? That's right. That's why you need to repent. Repentance would re repented of what? My sins. Do you know your sins? Yes. What is it? Adultery. Adultery and? No, I was never and what married. else? And what else? Giving my children away to Jesus Christ. So now, now that you know your sins, yes. you have one assignment to confess yes. them and to repent of them. See the ferry man, you got to put two silver stones on your eyes to get to the ferry man. You don't need them. super stones on your eyes to get to the ferry man, my friend. You need to be born again. You see, the thing about us is that we like to tie witchcraft to our Christianity. And so we have what we call Christian Plus, which is tied to, to New Age practices. Today, Christians are trying to, to chant words. You see, you don't chant your way into heaven. You repent and believe in Jesus. And Jesus is not a white man or a black man. He's a spirit that was made manifest in a Hebrew body to dispense eternal life that as many as will receive in, believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life jesus is not christmas tree christmas life your christmas activity has not changed hearts that is why there are many moxes and many churches in peckham it hasn't changed the crime rates as a matter of fact the new generation are getting worse and worse every day that is why we don't need a religion but we need a fellowship relationship with the one true god his name Jesus and don't let black people don't let them fool you Christianity was in Africa when the Ethiopian eunuch was read you see even the Africans were seeking the truth that they were going to Israel to go and partake in the in knowing God they sought the Ethiopian eunuch went all the way and encountered he encountered the one true God oh boy that is why we need to not be deceived. We're living a lie. And that is why we need to have a relationship with him and not a religion. Our religion will teach you that the gospel was brought by a white man. But we forget that the Ethiopian temple had the same specification of the temple that was in Jerusalem. Before there was a King James Version, there was an Ethiopian Bible. And the Ethiopian you know, was reading an Ethiopian Bible, a Tanakh in his hands. The, the Africans knew how to read. They read the Tanakh. They could read Hebrew, brother. That's right. Ah, Absolutely. the Africans read Hebrew. But you see, because we are stuck in religion, in Catholicism, we cannot know our, our religious history very well. And because of our unforgiveness and bitterness, we have come to this life that the white man brought the gospel to Africa. And we forget that the Ethiopians were looking for the gospel. They were going to Jerusalem. Africans were traveling to Jerusalem in the first century to seek the truth. 
And that is why I'm not here to preach hate. But I'm here to let you know, men were seeking God and not a religion. Men were seeking salvation and not a religion. Repent and seek Jesus. Repent. Repent. Don't worry. I don't care whether Jesus is black, blue or green. What I care about is that whether he came being white or black, he had the life of God that gives men life. And I don't need his colored life. I need the eternal life that is in him. That is what saves me. His black skin, even if Jesus was black, his black skin did not raise him from the dead. Even if Jesus was a Rastafarian, his Rastafarianism in eating herbs did not raise the dead. He did not, brother. We need Jesus. That is why we need the one true God and his son whom he has sent. Be delivered from the deception of this age and come to Jesus. See, the Rastafarians will tell you that they are the, they're from the line of the tribe of Judah. See, lions don't eat grass. They eat meat. And Paul said, because you have become like a babe, you cannot deal with the meat of the word. I want the meat of the word of God. You are drinking milk. You are Rastafarian, is it, but you are eating grass. Lions don't eat grass, they eat meat. They are not even drinking milk because they are not safe. You have to be born again to desire the sincere milk of the word of God. They don't see, they, when you are born again, you don't begin to desire the milk of Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism. You begin to seek for the message of Christ. When you are born again, you are not looking forward to Christmas and Easter. To receive Easter bunny eggs and a Christmas gift. Friends, as I come to the end of my message, good men don't go to heaven. They don't. They don't. Good men receive a visitation from Santa Claus. Santa looks for good men to give Christmas gifts. That is why the atheist who doesn't believe in God. And the Bible said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. But he's a fool, so he celebrates Christmas. The birth of the Son of God. He's a fool because he celebrates Easter. The death and resurrection of the Son of God. And that is the fallen. And the Bible said they've all become fools, corrupt and abominable. Because they believe there is no God. That is why we ought to repent from our atheism and Darwinism and evolutionism and believe in the one true God and his son whom he has sent. Repent and receive Jesus. No Buddha, no Krishna, no Mohammed, not, not Joseph Smith or Charles Russell. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. The Ethiopian eunuch came to seek Jesus. The Ethiopian you know read Isaiah 53 and he said, who are you talking about? He didn't say he was talking about Muhammad or Baha or Buddha. The Bible says, and Philip told, the Bible says in Acts chapter 9, that Philip preached Jesus. He didn't preach Buddha. He didn't preach Muhammad. He didn't preach Baha. He didn't preach Russell Smith. He preached Jesus. And the Bible says you were baptizing Jesus by the water. Friends, Today, I come for you to receive Jesus and not a religion. Come and receive the one that died and rose from the grave. Dear sister, don't be a Darwinist, man. Believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I'm not inviting you to come to my church. I'm inviting you to come into the kingdom through Jesus Christ. I'm inviting you and I'm offering you the gift of eternal life. That is why I'm offering you. Not church. Not a building. This building will all pass away. But guess what? The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will not pass away. And the Bible says that word that was in the beginning with God. In whom was life and the life was the light of man. That word doesn't pass away. He has an unpassing away life. That is dispensing today to those who will repent. Good men. Do not receive eternal life or go to heaven. Good men receive a visitation from Santa Claus. Good men will receive a Christmas gift that expires every year. And use a new Christmas gift. That Christmas gift is a Christmas life that has one year expiration dates. Repent and receive eternal life. Repent and believe in Jesus that you will be saved. That is why my message as it comes to the end. I'm here to preach eternal life. And therefore, friends, brothers and sisters in Peckham, 
There is the A, the B, the C, the D to receiving eternal life. The A is that all of us everywhere who admit we're sinners. The A is that all of us everywhere who admit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The B. The B is that we'll believe in him. We'll believe in him whom the Lord has sent. We'll believe him because he's the one true God and the one that was sent to deliver us from our sin. We must believe in Jesus, dear sister. He's the lamp of God. He's not a Christmas gift that gives Christmas life or Christmas gift. He's the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He's the lamp of God that giveth eternal life. He's the lamp of God that doesn't give you a religious life, but eternal life. He's the lamp of God that doesn't give you Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. He gives you eternal life. He's the lamp. Believe in him. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. So, from eternity past, had love for humanity. That he had an eternal life insurance. He created eternal life insurance to spare and to preserve humanity. That he sent Jesus. Many of you have car insurance, but you don't have eternal life insurance for your soul. Your soul has no eternal life insurance. But the Bible says, a man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. This father, his name is the Heavenly Father. He had an insurance for his children. He knew the sons of men will go their own way. From eternity past, he created an eternal life insurance. That eternal life insurance was, 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 was hidden in a mystery. In the mystery of the gospel. In the mystery of his will. In the mystery of his son. Was the life and the insurance of man hidden in Jesus. Not in Buddha. Not in Krishna. Not in Mohammed. The mystery of life is hidden in Jesus. But you see, you mystify God with your Christmas light and Christmas gifts. And your Christmas traditions and custom. In your Hill Marys, you mystify God with your religion, with your Hinduism, your Darwinism and evolutionism, your Islamism and your black Hebrew Israelite. You demystify and destroy the things of God. And so men are not encountering the one true God and his son whom he has sent. Repent! Become repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As I come to the end of my message, there is an ABCD to receive eternal life. Today, friends, I'm not here for you to receive a religion, but to receive Jesus. Because in him was life, and the life was the light of man. The C to receive eternal life is that you confess your sins. The Bible says in book, the book of John, the first John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, if you confess your sin, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. This is the good news. The good news is this, that if I confess my sins, why are you telling me to shut up? Do you know what you're saying? You see, your heart is stacking. God has given you up to uncleanliness, but the good news is, once he's given you up to a reprobate mind for telling me to shut up so that you will not retain the gospel in your mind, Christ still died for you. While you decided to save the creature, more than the creator who lived and abided forever and has been given up to a vile affection so that the women of our age have changed the natural use of a man and now are sleeping with themselves even the men burning in the last doing the things that are unseemly men with men recompensing the deeds of the error and the bible says generation have come though they are not homosexuals though they're not bisexual or part of the lgbt they take pleasure in them. And the Bible says the judgment of God is against those who don't do those acts. But take pleasure in them and endorse that lifestyle. Read the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 32. Repent because all these things are punishable by death. And it's painful for the homosexual. That you know what? It, it carries a death penalty sentence. But you see... I'd rather die in Christ. How do you die in Christ? Is that you repent from your homosexuality and your lesbianism. And you'll be made new. You can become born again. Maybe some of you say, I was born a homosexual or bisexual. Some have been born gangsters. They say, I was born a G. Well, today you can be born a Christ. A man of Christ, an anointed man. You can be born again. Friends, the deep 
to receiving eternal life is that you will deny yourself. Jesus said, if any man should come after me, not go to church, not sing hymns and sing gospel songs, dear sister. Don't frown your face. Life is short, you know. The day you'll be on your grave, we'll see whether you frown like that. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Friends, you must deny yourself. Jesus said, if any man should come after me, after me, not a religion. If any man should come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. Friends, I was once that guy who picked up my cross and I never followed Jesus. I wore the cross to drive away wicked spirits. <laughs> I will write the cross on my door thinking that there was power in writing the cross on the door. But the power was on him that was nailed to the cross and shed his blood to humanity. I was having a relationship with the wood and with the rosary than the person on the cross. And there are many today like that. That is why a gangster can have a Jesus piece on his neck and never be saved. That is why a gangster can pray the Lord's prayer and heal marriage and never be saved. Because salvation is not tied to a wood. But it's tied to the person that was nailed to the cross. It's tied to the person that was nailed to the cross and shed his blood for humanity. God bless you, children. God bless you. Friends, as we come to the end of my message, you must pick up your cross and follow Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, Peckham, hear me and hear me well. No one come to the Father, not through Allah, not through Buddha not through krishna not through muhammad but through jesus for he's the way the truth and the life hallelujah so today receive jesus receive jesus and receive eternal life receive muhammad and receive islam a religious life receive jesus and receive eternal life receive baha and receive a hindu life hey receive jesus and receive eternal life Receive Hela Selassie and receive a Rastafarian life. Repent! Repent! Repent, Peckham. Receive the founder of black Hebrew Israelites and become a black Hebrew Israelite with knowledge that doesn't add weights. Ah, they have a godly form, but they deny the power thereof. Ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Repent! And receive Jesus, the Yeshua HaMashiach. Repent, pick and repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And today we preach this kingdom gospel. The gospel of the king of the kingdom. The king who dwells in heaven. Seated high and lifted up, surrounded by cherubim and seraphim. The God who is a spirit that dwells in inapproachable life. The God who is invisible that cannot be seen with the naked eyes of men, but can be seen by those who are born again. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For behold, Peckham, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of an angel and with a shout. And that is why we shout preaching this gospel. That's why we shout with the voice of an angel. We sound the alarm because Jesus will be descending with clouds of heaven, with glory and with great power, with angels army, with great trumpets, sounding the alarm, gathering the elects in Christ and not the elects in Islam, in Buddhism. Repent for his coming. He's coming with power. Repent! Peckham for life is short and eternity is long. Have you given your life to the Lord? Have you given your life to the Lord? There is no hope in religion but hope in Jesus. Repent! Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the Lord will be descending with trumpets. Slough sounding trumpets. Trumpets will be sounding in the name of Jesus. When this trumpet blows, Peckham, will you be among those that will be translated? Or those that will be raised from the grave who are in Christ? Will you be those who have a new body? The Bible says, for those in Christ, at the sound of the last trump, Paul said, behold, I tell you a mystery, that we in Christ shall all be changed. And we will receive immortality. Our mortal bodies will receive immortal bodies. Our corruptible bodies will receive an incorruptible body. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place and by the blast of the shofar, when the trumpet blows, those who are in Christ will go to dwell in the mansion that is created in his father's house. Repent 
because Muhammad is dead and is not creating a mansion for Muslims. He's in the grave. Repent, for Jesus is risen. He has created a mansion in his father's house for you and I, that you will be saved. As I sound the alarm, when the trumpet blows, are you going to be among the number? Repent, repent, pick up. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. For the king of glory is not coming like a baby in a manger. So you can celebrate Christmas, your pagan festivity. Repent! For Jesus is not coming to die for sinners and be nailed to the cross. So you can celebrate Easter. Repent! For Jesus is coming as a king to judge all sinners. To call them. It's too late and be judged. Repent now! For tomorrow is not promised. Repent! And call on the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. The Lord Jesus and you and you and you and you and you and your family shall be saved in the name of Jesus. This is my story. Hallelujah. Hey. If you want to receive Jesus, come. You want to receive Jesus? You want me to stand with you and pray so we call on his name? I'm here. Oh, something happened. Hey, when I met Jesus. Many have met temples. They met religion. They haven't met the person. But something fresh happens to those who meet Jesus. Cannot explain. Hey, something happened. Oh, when I met the Son of God. Oh, something happened to me when I met the Son. The Son changed me from a Son of Man to a Son of God. When I met Jesus, I began to eat His body and drink His blood and receive eternal life and the remission of my sins. When I met Jesus, hey, something fresh. He changed my citizenship from being a citizen of the kingdom of darkness to becoming a citizen of the kingdom of God. Something happened. Oh, when I met the Son of God. I no longer became an ambassador for Satan, but an ambassador for Christ. I was not advertising the things of this world. Advertising the things of this world, but I become a one who advertised the kingdom by preaching the gospel leading men to repentance and discipleship unto christ repent hey something fresh something worse cannot explain something happened when i met the son of god oh this jesus is not something happened in your savior god bless you man of god all right What's your name? Oh, 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 Andre. Andre. Yeah. Good to meet you, Andre. Bless you, Give me a hand. Yeah. Have you got your number? Yeah, man. You live local. Knowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me and wash me in your blood. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Zero number seven.
thank you for everyone who has said that prayer. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name. No, 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 you won't get a ticket. No, you won't get a ticket. You won't get a ticket. Nice one now. God bless you. I'll give you a call. Something new. And oh, let's explain, guys. This is the end of the message. God bless you. Thank you for interceding and standing in the gap in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye bye.